Some Americans are familiar with the question, where are you from? And when the response is, I'm from the U.S. or from this state or city, the follow-up question is often, but where are you really from? You wouldn't think that this is also a common question in Sweden, but it is. Having lived in Sweden her entire life, Elizabeth Ausbrink is very familiar with being asked this line. I'm the child of two immigrants. Uh, my father was born in Budapest in Hungary and my mother was born in London. And they met here and I was made in Sweden and grew up here, but always felt different. Of course, my parents felt that they were very different from the rest of the Swedes. And growing up, always got the question about where do I come from? And I never could understand why did they target me with something alien. I didn't have an accent. I had a name that was common. There was this doubt all the time if I was really Swedish. Ausbrink is a writer based in Sweden and Copenhagen and the author of the book Made in Sweden, 25 Ideas That Created a Country. Ausbrink has always considered herself Swedish, but says there are some in Sweden who see those like her that are first generation or foreigners as inherently different. There is a sensitivity towards what one conceives as different and an idea of us here being the same. And this is, of course, a false idea, but it's nevertheless quite powerful. And I think it's a lot of immigrants or even guests in this country get the sense that they are looked upon as foreign. It's not racism. It's just an awareness. Ausbrink says part of this mentality may feed from the process of Swedish citizenship and its basis of blood heritage. Even if you are born in Sweden, you are not automatically a citizen if you are born to foreign parents. Here? There is this idea of blood and heritage, and I just followed my father's citizenship, although I was born and made in Sweden. So that's a Swedish value that tells you something about how people look upon us and them. When much of the world thinks of Sweden, we think of a country that's progressive, prosperous, and harmonious. Ausbrink touches on some of the other notions that she's heard about Sweden while traveling the world. Peaceful and, and equality, of course, between men and women, and uh, a rich country. And then we have a lot of famous names floating around, of course. Slatan Ibrahimovic, we have Ikea, we have ABBA, we have lots of music going on in the world. But I think a lot of countries are envious of the Swedish reputation of being a peaceful and equal country. And in many senses, they are right. But she says there's also another side to the country emerging, a mindset of division and a greater sense of loneliness amongst citizens. There's this Swiss Institute based in Switzerland doing surveys, interviewing people in over 100 countries about their values, how they view family the state, freedom, individuality, religion, all these things that matter a lot. And when they put together all this information from all these countries, Sweden always, always is the most lonely country on this graphic view. It's all on itself, differs from every other country in every aspect. So there are parts of the Swedish culture and the Swedish infrastructure that actually makes this to a very extreme country and very different from the rest of you. This isolation of opinion and way of living by Swedish citizens compared to other countries can partly be traced to the Swedish government welfare system, says Ausbrink. I think one of the most interesting things that became clear to me is if one compares Sweden, for instance, with, with the U.S., the basis of our welfare system and the basis of the Swedish way of living is a contract with the state between the individual citizen and the state. If I become ill or weak or old or 
in any way need help, I turn to the state. And the state has promised to help me. We pay high taxes, and these taxes are rewarded to us through this individual help. And this is a conscious choice because the aim was to free the individual from the family ties, from the individual's background. It shouldn't matter if you were born in a rich or a poor family, if you were a man or a woman, if you lived here or there. It should be equal opportunities for anyone. And compared to the U.S., it's vastly different. If you need help in the U.S., you turn to family and friends and networks. Only if you're in a very difficult position, you might turn to the state. So in Sweden, a direct line between the state and the individual that frees the individual, but also creates a lot of loneliness. With any government system, there are flaws. But Ausbrink says that it's up to a country's citizens to be cognizant of what can be changed and improved upon. And this applies to being aware of the shift happening in her country's political landscape as well. Unfortunately, um, I can see that the right-wing populist party that has gained a lot of voters during the last years, they are quite inspired by um, your president. A lot of the things he has said about media, journalists, about who tells the truth and who you shouldn't trust, I can hear as echoes coming from them. And also the strategy of building up your own news agencies, putting out your own angles and maybe not even uh, truth. is very strong here. So... Um, In that sense, I can see Sweden, some people in Sweden, directly copy this strategy. In this day and age of global interconnectivity, political campaigns have the power to influence millions of people in real time. Technology and the transfer of information is a powerful tool. And Ausbrink says it's important to keep a country's core values at heart in this complicated world. What I really would like to see is a change of mentality so that we become more like the self-image that America used to have, that we are a country where people choose to come to start their new lives. And this is something beautiful and good. And this is what I really wish for. It'll be a bumpy road, but I actually think we're going there. To find out more about Elizabeth Ausbrink and her book, Made in Sweden, 25 Ideas That Created a Country, visit viewpointsradio.org. This segment is written and produced by Amira Zaveri. Studio production by Jason Dickey. I'm Marty Peterson. Viewpoints returns in just a moment. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, please call this toll-free number right now. 800-279-0419. That's 800-279-0419. By calling your addiction team, you're taking the first steps to recovery. Don't fight addiction alone. Their advisors are ready to take your call. Your future is still a bright place. The help you need could be one call away. 800-279-0419. That's 800-279-0419. This call is completely confidential. And if you have private insurance, there could be little to no cost to you. Even if you've already been to treatment, give us a call. There's no need to let addiction ruin your life. Take the first step now. Call your addiction team at 800-279-0419. That's 800-279-0419. Make the free call now. 800-279-0419. Your addiction team is a third-party advertiser for various treatment centers and placement networks. Individual results will vary. Visit youraddictionteam.com slash terms for more information. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you can donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-835-1478. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car. And as a special thank you, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. 
Call Heritage for the Blind right now. Call 1-800-835-1478. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher for donating. Call now, 1-800-835-1478. That's 1-800-835-1478. Thank you for listening to Viewpoints Radio, a production of MediaTracks Communications. If you enjoyed this broadcast, please support our show by subscribing, sharing it with a friend, and leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. You can find more Viewpoints stories on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and ViewpointsOnline.net. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Viewpoints Radio. Coming up next week... Perhaps even more surprising were pictures of just the devastation throughout Germany, Dresden, and how whole cities were taken down by bombs. The photographers who documented the end of World War II. Then... These things are non-biodegradable hazardous waste and that they need to be regulated in ways that we haven't done yet. Cigarettes and their toll on our environment. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in-depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints.